What's going on everyone? In today's bookmind video, we're gonna be talking about high pricing errors because, oh my goodness, Victor, everyone's always like, high pricing error, high pricing error, what the heck do I do? How do I prevent high pricing errors? And how do I get rid of them? How do I deal with them? Uh, strategies, tips, and um, before we get in the video, I'm joined with my co-host here, Victor Gatgos. What's going on, man? How's it going, Joji? This is a great topic. Uh, a lot of people have issues with it. So uh, yeah, let's get into it. Yep, we're actually gonna show you guys what is now a recorded video that was all of the BookMine Prospector members. So if you're unfamiliar with the BookMine sort of ecosystem, there's three different tiers that you can sign up for if you're a BookMine member, the middle tier or beyond. The middle tier is called the, called the Gold Prospector tier, and that's where we have twice monthly live recorded sessions or live live meetings with Victor Gagnus and I. And ba basically, we go over a specific topic. And in this one hour session, we talked about high pricing errors. Why? Because people are always like, Joji, Victor, how do I get rid of these high pricing errors? And a lot of people, you know, understandably have a lot of anxiety anxiety around them, they freak out about them, and uh, we wanted to address that issue. And so this is also kind of a little bit of a plug for, you know, the gold mine prospector tier because there's tons of value that we add during those recorded sessions. Again, we come there with an actual topic and of course it's live. So people come in, you know, other book my members ask questions and, you know, it's a great way for you to get a little extra help definitely when it's selling this online book arbitrage business. So anything else you want to say, Victor, before you get right in the video? And in this video, we got a lot of tips and tricks and strategies of how to get out of a high priced error. So yeah, your guys are in for a treat and uh, yeah, great video. All right, so with that said, enjoy the video. Look at this over the garden wall book. You can actually see this is a book that was selling in, you know, right under 100, sold really well when it got down to 50, 60, came back up to the 90s, even sold, sold upwards of 100 or more. And then you can actually see how the offer count just took a dive. It went from seven, basically just off the listing, right? And then what you can see is this book was, you know, this is a book that's basically almost, it is very rarely not, has very rarely not had anyone selling the book. There have been some occasions, but you can actually see what has happened is, um, you know, offer count went off from basically eight to zero. And then you can actually see collectible offers come back on the listing. So it's kind of hard for you to see that collectible line because it's a light blue color, but you can see it get up to five there. And that's going back to what Victor said is you find books that don't tend to have very many used offers and have a lot of collectible offers. That's a sign that, hey, if you buy this book, it's probably going to be a book that will trigger high pricing here. Now, the other thing that is really interesting about the list price is that a lot of books that have very low list price eventually will sort of, or potentially can have a high pricing here. But what's important to know is that you could still have a book that has a very, very low list price and it could still be active at a pretty yeah. high use right. price. So I wouldn't say that's a guarantee that if the list price is low, that it's going to trigger high pricing here. But definitely if you see a lot of collectible offers, that's one telltale sign. And you can actually see this is a book I did buy. I bought this for fifty two ninety four. The reason is pretty obvious. I mean, it's selling for well over $100. And this is a book that I did get or a high pricing error for. And now I'm having to figure out what to do with this book, right? Because I was maybe paying a little bit more attention to the fact that, okay, yeah, there haven't been any used offers on this listing. Most of the, the offers are in collectible condition. I really should have listed this mm -hmm. in collectible condition, but I didn't. I listed it in used, used condition. Now it's at a high pricing here. And here's an example of a, of a book here that, if I wanted to Amazon, if I had, if I wanted to uh, sell this, meaning get rid of the high pricing here, then I'd had to sell for a loss, which is obviously not something that I'm going to do, especially for a book like this that's worth a lot of money. So one other tip that we have for trying to figure out what the maximum you'll be able to list the book at at that current time yeah. is to go ahead, type in the ASIN or or your SKU number into your managed inventory, and then once you're there, click on the edit button on the right. And once you do that, you'll come here to the listing or your offer page. And what you can do is actually change your price until the high pricing here is no longer there. So normally you're going to have to put a list price if you don't already have a list price. So I'll just put mine at 200. I don't think it really matters what you put it at, although I usually put it at really high. And then you can see it says, okay, the selling price was identified as a potential high pricing here. But again, no formula, no reason as to why that is just them telling you, no, we don't like you. We're not letting you price at this, which again, is fine. So what I like to do is then just kind of go back and forth. So I'll go to a dollar and obviously gets rid of that because if I sold this for a dollar, Amazon would love that, right? <laughs> yes. So then I can go back and say, okay, well, what about 150? And then you can see, well, 150 is going to be, so let's go to 75. So if you kind of just bounce back around between high numbers, you're like, okay, well, 75 is still high pricing here. Well, what about 50? 
It's like, okay, well, 50 is not. So maybe we can go up from there. Maybe it's 60. Looks like 60 is fine, maybe 65. So what I'm trying to do is see how how far I can go where Amazon's going to actually allow me to go list this. So it looks like maybe 61 or 60 is going to be it. So maybe $61. The question is, do I want to price this book at 61 if I bought it for $53? Well, obviously not, right? Because I'd be losing money. But again, this is a rare example where I'd be losing $10. You might think, wow, you're losing $10. But if you think about it, I mean, I, I spent $53 on the book, right? So like the worst case I'm going to lose is $10. And that's, if I if I listed this, I gar- can guarantee you if I listed this book for $61, it'd probably sell within like three hours because of the fact that this book technically hasn't been in stock for a long time. And actually there's not even any collectible offers because all the collectible offers are sold out. So this is one of those cases where, it, you know, it's not ideal for me to li- to sell for 61 and I'm actually not because I can actually make a lot of money. What I'll do is just get this shit back to my house. You can see under stranded inventory, you can see this is going to be in disposal 425. So I have automatic disposal removal going to actually my house. So I actually don't have it set to my prem center. I have it set to my house here. And then what I'll do is I'll just send it back in on my own. I ship stuff in and I'll probably just list it in collectible condition, probably between 120 and 130. And you know, yeah, sure, I'll go ahead and pay, you know, 4 or $5 for the removal order. But at the end of the day, right, it's still going to be a book that's going to be very profitable. So what you're kind of waiting uh, for is that one person to sell it for 61. Yeah. And then and then you'll be able to build it even higher than that, right? The next sell yeah. could probably be in the 70s, $75 or something like that. And then yeah. and then now you have a, a collection of used sellers again. And now you're back. Uh, the, the book is basically recovered from what, whatever the high price error was. So that that's another way, basically just wait it out. And a lot of times when I have a high price error, I just, I, I do my best just to wait it out. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and most of the times I just wait, wait, uh, I just do the same thing. I just will wait it out. And so here's a good example, the art of the devil. Let me show this to you guys and keep as well. I have a good example of that. So this is a book that when did I sell this? Sold this a few times. As you can see, it sold it at 63, 99, 110, 110. So it sold four times. And so the purchase date of this would have been March 8th. So let's look at March 8th. This would have been uh, over a year ago. So we'll just look at 2023. So this is when I picked it up here for $23. Okay. And I picked up, I think, four or five copies. So $23. Tried to list it at what it was selling for in the past. Like you can actually see it had two sales ring drops what before I had bought it for looks like in the 115s. So obviously, even though I was selling the book for the first sell, this book was at $63.99. That's actually not what my intended sales price was, even though that was still profitable, right? $69.99 was still a $23 right. profit. Yeah. But they, you know, Amazon was like, hey, we're not going to let you list this book that high. Um, and so what I end up having to do is just list it at $63 at first. So... You can actually see well, maybe someone came and stocked at 45, 52, uh, 59. I'm trying to look at when was that first day that I sold it. So it have been May 22nd. Oh, is it, actually, this is a really good example showing yeah. that you can keep build, like, building up to that yeah. higher price. Yeah. And that's that. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was trying to make. And so they would only let me, even though the price had been at 70, they only let me go up to $63 for some reason, uh, I, you know. And so I had to build, I had to build. Uh, build sell. So I was able to sell that first one at $63. And after I sold that first one for $63, all of a sudden it shot up to me being able to list it at 99 or 89 or something like that. I think I listed at 89, then it, then listed at 99. I think that was the most that they would let me sell it at. And, and, and then it sold at 99. So what I'm telling you guys is they would only let me list it at 63. Anything 64 or more was no high price yeah. error. So okay. I decided to sell at 63. As soon as the 63.99 offer sold, then the price can now go up to 99. Boom, sold at 99. Again, that 99 was the next max that they were letting me sell it at. Anything higher than that would have been high pricing here. After the $99 sale, then I just went up to 110 because I didn't want to really list it for more than 110 because if you look back at historical data, that's kind of like what the most it was selling for is 110. So I was basically, like Victor said, able to build up the price I wanted. And granted, you'd only really be able to do that if you have multiple copies available, right? Right. Which is why if you do get an amazing deal on a book that you can pick up multiple copies of, I still think it's worth it selling the first one at a lower ROI and the next one at a slightly higher one and then eventually building it up. And the good news is like 
you know, at sixty nine ninety nine, again, I was still wildly profitable. And then the last ones at one ten were even better, right? Oh, it's big. Yeah. Another kind of hack that I have is that when I find a book that is a slower moving book, like a book that sells maybe less than once a month, and I'm interested in it because it has a proven track record before that point that it sells, and it's say it's it's substantially lower than its history. Um, what I'll do is I'll try to make a preference to uh, priority to go and to go to eBay and purchase it, right? So that Amazon doesn't track that I purchased it su at such a low price on Amazon because like it could trigger that high price there on Amazon. So if I buy it on eBay, it doesn't it doesn't show it on Amazon that it's sold, and so it doesn't have that low price point and um, that book. There's a better chance that that now there won't be a high price there when I'm trying to list it. So it's another. A good tip that I uh, tend to use. If I can, I'll buy it off eBay. So, yeah, good point. Uh, some really good comments. So the first one is Scott Burgess says, "While I haven't tried it personally, I believe there is a way to change the listing from used to collectible without having to have it shipped back to you. I think there is a way to do that. Although I've never personally done it, I think Sarah done Sarah's it. Sarah's the one that does it, huh? Yeah, Sarah's done it a few times and walked walked some people through it. So, but I've never done it either. Yeah, I've never done it. So maybe you'd be It'd be good to, to try that. What's up, Fernando? Hey, guys. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, when when uh, our offer goes to a stranded, does that record on keep uh, as an offer count drop? Yeah. The offer count does, but that, not the sales rank. So that you can tell that there's no sales rank drops there. It'll just uh, go down and use offer count. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It yeah. will go down. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, because because uh, you're you're no longer on the listing, right? If you were on the listing and now you're off the listing because it's high pricing here or any other reason, then that will reflect on the keepage. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so, uh, with that, uh, we can say that any use line that that we see on Keepa, uh, that means that that offer was active at some point. So even even you know, if it's showing 150 for that book, you know, uh, a year ago, it means that at that moment it was not showing a pricing error, or right. something happened in the algorithm that now the pricing error is triggered down back to 60 or something like that. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. What's up, Seagull? Uh, okay, so to change from used to collectible, you delete the listing, wait until it goes to standard, okay. and then use the same SKU. You click the release and list it and change the condition. It so, hold on. do that. So, so, so hold on. You delete it? Or yes, you on. delete this listing and let it okay. go to standard, yes. So, so let's try it right now. Why not? Okay, so here... You have to use the same SKU number. Yes, you know it's the SKU, I'm guessing. Yes, the same SKU. Okay. Yes. Don't lose the SKU. But probably you want to see okay. that SKU somewhere. Uh, yeah. So when you click the list, uh, it would uh, remember the, the SKU. So you don't have to. Oh. Oh, okay. No, it, it, it will remember the SKU for you. Is that, is that what you said, Sigo? It will remember the SKU? It will remember, yes. Okay, so... Okay, so how would I... Uh, yeah, it, yes. There. Yeah. Uh, delete listing. Delete yeah, product delete. and listing. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, and it takes, it would take a while until it goes funded. So I know we'll, we'll, wait we'll until the call, but okay. So delete product and listing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And that, that it will go stranded. So maybe before we break today, uh, let's check if it got deleted. And then okay. you can release it. Okay. It just says it takes up to 15 minutes. So okay. there you go. Well, all right. I'm excited. Let's see if this works. Um, cool. One other tip that, uh, one sec there, Fernando, one other tip that Jan had, this will, this is also important, is if you want to get notified for use price that rebounds and therefore you can you know, list the book again for that price, or you can go back in your inventory and change the price update. You can also track books for not just, you know, hitting a certain price or below, like if you're looking for a price drop, you can also do the opposite. So let's say for this book, I want to be notified when it hits $110 or more. Right now the default is or less, but you could change that to or more. 
Yeah. But now you can get notified as well via Keepa notification over the next, you know, year or whatever, you know, year or three years if it ever hits that again. So a really good tip there by Jan. What's up, Fernando? A quick question. What is it that we're trying to do with the by deleting the the product? We're changing it to collectible so that it stays okay. active. Yeah. Yeah. Because basically what would have to happen is if I wanted to relist this book in collectible condition, uh, I would just get it removed and sent back to my address and then get the book back in Amazon, but right, right. having listed it in collectible condition. But basically what Seagal is saying, well, why don't you just delete the listing, have it go stranded in Amazon's inventory and then relist it in collectible condition so that it now becomes a collectible offer there. Okay, cool. Let's see if it works because I have the problem that uh, for some reason it goes listed as new and, you know, we don't want that. We, you know, I want to use it as new. So I guess we can use the same trick. I'm uh, thinking so neither yeah. one of us have done it, although a lot of other people have reported success. So yes, we, we believe okay. that cool. we can. Yeah. Exciting. Yep. Exciting. What's up, Dale? Uh, can you hear me? We, we can, can hear you. Dale. Okay. I had that. Um, I had a book that I paid 75 bucks for and I got a high pricing there. They told me I could sell it for $26.70 or something like that. I, I messed around with, you know, when they send you the message, they've got an information thing there that gives you about four different ways that you can, I don't know, if you need to price it at the list price they give you or I don't know what the end or some kind of average. And I tried to do that and it wouldn't work. And so I just put it at the price that they, the, they gave me, 26 And I met, well, I was uh, intending to go back and, and re, you know, change it back again so that it would go unsellable and I could leave it there. I wanted to be able to uh, keep it in there without getting it home. Yeah. And I went back about 30 minutes later and it already sold. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say it sold, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, we're laughing, but we'll, we've all done it. I've done it. <laughs> like, dang it. <laughs> Change mine to uh, collectible from now on. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a lesson. It's a good lesson learned, right? Yeah, that's what I was kind of saying just a moment ago with that that first book I was showing you guys. It said, well, I could, you know, price it at what Amazon will let me price it for, but it'll be gone within like a few hours, right? I know that, so I'm not going to do that. But what, good lesson learned there for sure. And we're going to see if maybe... We can swap this use to collectible condition. We'll work with Seagal's guidance. Yeah, before, so Bob, before in this meeting. So yeah, Bob, what's up? What is what have you guys found is like the percentage above or like the dollar amount above the high, the highest price that's there. So like I have a used, so I have one at high pricing that I'm at seventy. Highest price is at like at fifty nine. So it's like or is at fifty. So I just dropped it to 59 to see as I work. But do you guys have like a rule of thumb of like typically you can go like $10 above or 10% or something like that above the highest price? Well, if we look at Joji's uh, options, right? He bought he bought that book for $53 that, and he was able to sell it for 61. So that was like what, 10, 10 uh, 20%? So the 20% there and then he sold one for, well, it was right at 70. And then the next one he was able to sell for 110. So that was what, $30 more? So 7, 14, 21, 28. So forty percent. I don't. I, that's what I mean. It doesn't make it doesn't make that much sense. But at least at least twenty percent. Um. Let's yeah. See. Yeah. It, uh, I will say. Yeah. It doesn't make much sense. Other no. than you should be able to sell it for more than what it was when you sold so it. the last. Yeah. The last sale. Yeah. I would say maybe twenty percent. I don't know. Yeah. I would say fifteen percent. Yeah. Yeah, I, it, it, if we don't have that answer, it's it. Yeah, it, it, Amazon is just weird in in their algorithms. I I, can't, I haven't still haven't figured out. Now it's like three years later, it still haven't figured out how I priced there and how they figure that out. But my, but like I said, my best options are those. If there's a abnormal amount of collectible listings, or um, I also try to buy the book off of eBay so that so that Amazon doesn't have that data that I bought it that cheap. Also helps out a lot. Things like that really help keep a lot of the stranded uh, books off my inventory. So some of the other reasons why you might be getting a high pricing here would be just you're listed way too high. So like one very easy example is that whenever your prep center ships the book into Amazon, like most of, you know, I'll share almost, I mean, not all, but a good percentage of the books that get shipped in. When my prep center ships them in, you can see that the price is $199. It's just a default price. And you can see how many of them have high pricing errors. 
And that's just because those are wildly overpriced relative to what they should be sold for. So in many cases, those high pricing errors are easy to fix. It's just, you know, that current price is way too high for what you should be listing the book at anyways. And you can go ahead and you can update that. So uh, did you have anything else you wanted to specifically go over there? Or otherwise, Victor, we can just go into some of my inventory and some of the books that I have sitting here and we can we can talk about what to do with them. Um, so just, you know, the things that influence a high price there is the list price, is the most uh, the most recent sales of a book. And sometimes if Amazon's able to collect the data from other websites, those are the three wins that influence high price there. And so if a book hasn't sold in, say, months, that's where the list price becomes a higher influence, right? Because the list price is the only thing Amazon goes for because there's no uh, price, anything that's sold. In, in so many months. So if a list price is always really low, you know, kind of pay attention to it somewhat if, if a book's not selling often because it, it becomes more and more of a, a bigger influence if there's not very few sales. But if a book sells tons, you really don't need to pay attention to the list price. It's more of the, the use price that 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 it uh, that Amazon pays attention to. I, I don't know. They, these are just tips that I look at, right? I don't have like, you know, a specific example of showing that. I know that I think it was Steven posted a book on our on uh, Bookmine, no, yeah, on that Bookmine Facebook group, and asked us to look at it. I don't know if here, Jojo, I'll send you the yeah. uh, screen number. Okay. Let me look at it. Yeah. Okay. Send it there. Let's get in Keeper here. All right. So here's a. Here's a. So was there anything specifically that we're looking at here? That he keeps on getting a high price error with it, and okay. he, he had just having challenges of of uh, getting it active. Okay. So, do you any idea what his buy cost was? I'm assuming it's one of these ten dollars. Yeah, dollars. I forget. I forget what I paid for it. All I know is there are about three or four other uh, sellers who are selling it eighty, ninety dollars, and I can't seem to even sell it for. Yeah. Oh, uh, so I see. So there's some at the one forty, some one twenty. Okay. So that's also one other important thing that we should mention is yeah, that good idea. Uh, that was a great example there. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So so say so, so here you have a book where Stephen might not be able to list it for let's say forty five or fifty, yet there's other people in use condition higher than him, and even some people are like way high, uh, way higher than him that are just sitting there. So what's gonna happen with the high pricing here is and this is why it happens so frequently if you have a repricer, is whenever your price changes then that's when the high pricing error would trigger. So these people prices have probably just been sitting at this price for a long time. And so because they haven't changed their price at all, technically uh, they, you know, hasn't the, this price update hasn't gone through Amazon's algorithm to say, Hey, this book is now uh, overpriced or it's uh, a high pricing error. Um, does that make sense? Feature? Yeah, no, it's exactly what, but that's exactly what that was, right? Basically if that, book has remained stable and you know, haven't repriced it at all, it's not going to trigger a high price there until you change the price. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. I, I just don't know what to do. Um, yeah, so I think the first thing would be to go back to see what's, what your buy cost was, and then you're going to have to make a decision, right? Which would be, okay, do I sell it at a loss? by listing collectible condition or do I just let it sit there and hope that the price recovers? Now for that book specifically, it, it really depends on what you paid for that book because uh, you know, if you if you had bought it for this price, which was the 1048, I mean you could actually sell it right now at 34 and you could still make money. 34 is actually the lowest price right now on Amazon that so de definitely that's a price that you should be able to list the book at. Um now, this book doesn't necessarily seem to go up in value very much over time. So I would say already selling it at 34. It looks like it potentially has had some sales in the 120s, which is, although that was like two sales out of, you know, many, many years of data. So I would just say in this case, I'd probably just list it in the, at 34 and just make, you know, 7 to $10 on it and just move on. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I, yeah, I, I lowered the price by one penny and that worked for about eight hours, and then he huh. sent me another high pricing error strands again, and I, so, okay, I'll go back and just say thirty three ninety nine or something like that, yeah. just to get rid of the dumb thing, forget yeah. about any 
loss or gain on it. I've got so many other books. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's a good way to think about it as well. As sometimes it's, it's, I mean, if you think about it, high pricing yeah. is actually good for moving inventory because it means that you're, you're forced to price the book cheaper, which theoretically should mean that the book is going to sell more quickly. And I list it as like new because it's in perfect condition. Nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I guess somebody sees it for thirty three ninety nine, they might be thrilled to get get it. Yeah. Compared to the other prices and and uh I might have paid seventy dollars for it. I forget what I paid for the darn thing. Uh, you definitely you definitely wouldn't have paid seventy. I, yeah. I can I can look it up and find out what I actually yeah. Yeah. but uh Okay, I appreciate your help, guys. I, I will yeah. I will just go back and list them for thirty three ninety nine. I'm thinking maybe what might happen, maybe maybe if you bought it in February, maybe you saw the sales back here in November, December at like one twenty. And so you might have picked it up for thirty. Maybe I'm not sure. But yeah, I mean if you can go back into your Amazon account right now and figure out what you bought it for and figure out um yeah, I mean, that'd be great because then it would help us with the decision, right? Because my decision as to what to do with these books is purely dependent on what I bought the book for. If I bought the book for an incredible price already, then I can basically sell it. Right. Yeah, I can sell it at whatever Amazon wants me to and I'll still be yeah. profitable. If I paid a lot of money for this book, like I did that first one, now I have to be a little bit more creative with what my strategy is going to be. And so, so Joji, let's look at the book to see, uh, could we have figured out that uh, book could have had a high price there? What were some of the telltale signs, right? One of okay. them being the... The used offer count just really just diving twice. You know, that's something yeah. there. And also it, if you had clicked on the list price, you can see the list price being pretty low there. And it, like I was saying, it gets more of an influence when there's less sales. So it's like for the last like what month or something, oh, there's only been like one sale on April and, and then yeah. on the list price. So the list price becomes more of an important thing the, the less sales there is. So that's right. why probably you're having a list... Uh, price the book down every day a little bit because the list price becomes more and more of an influence until there's another sell. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting, but you actually see how the offer count dives like here, here mm -hmm. really low, but also the sales rank dives super low. It's down to like 15,000. So for whatever reason, it sold really well right then. But this one, this offer count dive right here actually had no change in okay. sales rank at all. Yeah. Definitely interesting there. So, well, a lot of the times what I do when I get books that are in high pricing, I'll, I'll literally just let them sit for like months. And the reason for that is oftentimes, like we have mentioned, is you'll have a somebody actually list the book for what it what Amazon will let them sell it for. They'll end up selling it. And then that price gets bumped up. Whoever, whatever, whoever knows what that, you know, whatever the algorithm is, 10, 15, 20 percent, whatever. But the price be back up. In so many cases, I'll go back to a book. You know, and they'll say, oh, you know, this book is going to be removed in three days. And I'll look at it and my price is in high pricing at 50. And then I'm seeing on the listing, there's people listed at 65 and 75. And so I can just update my price and then it goes live again. So that's definitely one strategy. And I like that strategy, especially if you're buying books that hold long-term historical value. I always think of like putting my money in an asset, putting my money into something that has more value than, you know, the dollars I used to buy that thing for. So to me, it's like if I if I know that this thing has an inherent value of sixty to seventy dollars, like it doesn't matter to me if I let it sit there for three months and high pricing it, right? And that's because my mindset about you know Amazon is more of like an investment strategy, right? It's like an alternative to investing my money in the S and P five hundred, which did get you you know on historical average you see seven to eight percent per year. So my thought process is, well, if I have to let it sit there a few more months, but I know that I'm still going to be able to sell it and make great money on it, then that's fine with me. Because again, the alternative is to put that money and get 8% in a year's time. So I understand that that's a little bit different of a perspective because, you know, you could also think of this as a business, which I mean, it is a business. And in a business setting, you're thinking of how do we get inventory to turn as fast as possible? I need to sell this now, sell it now. And obviously in that perspective, the goal should just be to sell things as soon as you can. So I don't know if that's, I don't know. What, uh, what's your thought on that, Victor? I mean. No, I, I'm in the same um, thought process. I mean, it, I, all the work has already been done, right? I've already bought the book. The prep center prepped it. It's at Amazon. I'm, I want to keep it at Amazon. So I'm going to just hold on to it until I, it's at least 
I mean, if I feel like it's never going to, you know, actually make a profit, it's going to take too long, then I'll just break even and move on. Right. Because the longer that I have to pay attention to a book, the less money I'm making overall. Right. I make money by sourcing and, and, and buying uh, really good books. So I could be spending my time on, on book buying, finding more books. And I, I always know that that's the best way to make money in this business. So I am trying to see if I can break even, maybe make a few dollars off of it. If not, leave it, leave it in the um, high priced air and then go check on it again in a month. I, I literally have, I really don't think about it much. I don't, I don't think about those high priced airs, except when it's like closer to the time where it's like, it's about to send the book back to me. That's when I'll go in yeah. and uh, reset the clock. And uh, or, or we'll also check to see whether or not I can break even on the book. Um, right. And again, like you were saying, Joji, only 10 to 15 percent of your books are on high price stairs. And, you know, mine's a little bit lower than that also because I usually buy uh, really fast moving books or more fast moving books than, than you. So uh, yeah. but I still have quite a bit of them. And I, I again, I don't worry about them unless, you know, unless it's coming up on that um, time where Amazon's uh, going to send the book back to me. Yeah. Yeah. And so what I always do is look at the auto removal days because the last thing that I really want is for it to get shit back to me. So this is, you can see I've got, you know, pretty much every day I'll have, you know, 425, 427, 420. Like every day I'll have a few books that potentially can get, so it's like there's actually a lot of 420, 429. So I always go back in and this is kind of what it's approaching that date where I'll change prices and then go back and, you know, so I'll basically change the price so that it's no longer high pricing here and then you know, reset it back up. And so, you know, a great example are um, seasonal books, like the 10 yeah. tiny gingerbread. <laughs> I'm at $25 and Amazon's like, nope, I don't think so, buddy. Uh, and so what we could do is, well, we could say, well, what's going on with this book? Why is it this in a high pricing area? So let's take a look. You can actually see that uh, we've got a prime offer at $9 and you can see that this book obviously does very well during Christmas, right? Early in November, it's, you know, the sales rank starts getting really low. Basically, by the end of November, there's nobody on the listing anymore. But even despite that, right, it looks like Amazon is definitely limiting how high they let this book go up to. So maybe, maybe in the 20s there, but, you know, here's a book that's basically done well every year. Let's see if Amazon, you know, Amazon really hasn't let this book go above like 19 to $20, right? So, but I, but I also argue there, there's just no more copies left. So if you if you had that copy, say in the beginning of December, the last person sold it for twenty two dollars. I imagine they would let the next person sell it for twenty five. There's just nobody left each right. year. Yeah, right. So basically, what we could do is we could, you know, go to Amazon and we could go ahead and take this ASIN, go to Manage Inventory, and we could say, hey, uh, I said ASIN not coming up. So the radiation? No, it's not the radiation. Okay, there it is. So we can take a look at it. And so this is a book that I, you know, I have a really low purchase price on. I bought it for two seventy three, and you might be like, "Well, how did you buy a book for two seventy three? Well, you know, often on eBay, you have these book book sell book stores running buy three get one free, buy two get one free. So there's an example. You know, if this person had three copies available, you know, you're picking it up for significantly cheaper, right? So. I buy costs on this book, and I think there's two of them that I have in stock. Yeah, uh, actually, yeah, two of them I have in stock. So um, cost price was two dollars and seventy three cents. I mean, basically got it really cheap. But again, I can come back here and and I can play the game again, or I can say it. Well, if I go down to a dollar, obviously they'll let me sell for a dollar. Obviously, if I go to twenty five, which is where it's listed at, they're gonna give me a high pricing ass. Yeah. So what if I go to fifteen? See, would they let me list it at fifteen? Okay, so let me list it at 15. What about 20? Okay, so 20 is too high. What about 18? Okay, so 18 looks to be fine. And I mean, even if I sold for 18, I'm still making $6 profit, which is, I mean, <laughs> triple your money. <laughs> triple my money, right? Which yeah, is not yeah. terrible. It, to, yeah. I can't see because you sell for $18 at least, uh, especially because of the fact that it, it gets really low. The off account gets really low. But going back to what Victor said is, you know, I might still want to hold out for 25 bucks on this book. So I'll just go ahead and save it and finish. Now this book is going to be listed at $18. This is now no longer going to be in stranded inventory. And then I could go back and just change it back to 25. Or, you know, I can just list at 18. It's probably going to sell at that. And I can just be happy making $12 profit, which buys you what, like a burrito these days? <laughs> hey, Josie, I think we're good at actually going to check on that uh, collectible book. Okay. You want to try that out? 
Uh, yes. um, do you have you save the skew or I don't? Uh, yeah, so you want to walk me through this real quick? Yeah. You don't mind? Yes, go back to your inventory and find it. Okay, so go manage inventory. And then, um, actually, hold on. I think I did have the SKU, but then I, I uh, don't need to close it. Yeah, close yeah. it. So oh, yeah. So okay. this right here, right? Okay. Oh, it's still, uh, it's still uh, high pricing yellow. So it didn't update, right? Uh, apparently not, yeah. It would have well, this page will refresh. Uh, it should be, yeah. All right. Um, so if I, well, how would you find it? So here's the F and, here's F and How would you find it from here? Uh, well, it should show as out of stock, not available. Oh, it should show stranded. Yeah. Uh, go, yes. Try, try search. Oh. This is the FSQ. Can you try to search for the ASIN? The ASIN. Okay, yeah. ASIN. Okay, there you go. Oh. Sometimes it takes a very long time for it to actually move into stranded. Okay. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I don't really wait overnight. I okay. I never try after fifteen minutes. <laughs> so after, so let's say we wait a day, so it would show up right here, and would... yeah, and then you have the option to relist. Okay, so I'll relist it, and then I'll be able to change the condition it, or change. Yes, it. Uh, yes. Sometimes you get an error, so I normally get an error saying, "Oh, you cannot relist it on a different condition." Oh, that's on. Oh, the error is, oh, that Q is already used. But then I leave it alone, and the, the next day I check, and it's listed collectible. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, maybe you'll take... A lot of faith here. It's like, okay, <laughs> it's aired, but yet it, somehow it works. Wow, okay. Yes. Yeah, and uh, that's what I read on the judges' Discord. So some people see different errors, and many times it still works. Still works. Okay. I mean, that's definitely useful. But yeah. Definitely useful for sure. Um, does anyone feel like there is any any questions you guys have with high pricing or something that we haven't answered? Yeah, I, I mean, because it's an extensive topic, right? And um, I think one thing that you all get out of this is there's no magic. There's no magic being the sure it isn't all <laughs> the issue, right? It's kind of a myriad of solutions. Uh, and there's a myriad of problems. We, we we I mean, we're all buying books lower than you know. At a certain point, there there was a valley that we purchased the book at, and now we're trying to sell it at its peak. With there's uh, Amazon's giving problems with that. So yeah, uh, JFD Leon raises hand. What's yeah. going on? Oh, hi you guys. Um, I don't know if this was covered earlier, but I wanted to ask: Is it when you um change your the list price to a higher price in a book, does that help at all in getting a book on stranded? That's a, that's a good question. Uh, you know, so when you edit the when you edit, let's say. When you find a listing in your inventory and then you edit it and then it wants you to add a list price, I find that I put like an extremely high number and I don't think it does anything to affect the list price. I see. Okay. What, 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 so what do you say? No, no. I, I, um, I've, I've heard not to put zero, right? Because that, that's probably the, or, or like I, I just don't put anything or, or put 200. It, like if it forces me to do something, I also, which is the weirdest thing, Joji puts 200. I put 200 also. Just put 200 yeah. in there. So yeah, that's probably what I do. Thanks. Yeah, great minds think alike. Yeah, <laughs> so like, I, like I'll make two hundred uh, if it's two hundred. I'll make money off of whatever book it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's the way I think about it as well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what's up, Stephen? When I I found out I had a book that was possibly counterfeit, mm -hmm. I went in and changed the price to four thousand four hundred forty four dollars. Uh huh. It's, it no. is all. <laughs> oh, that would be awesome! I wouldn't. Yeah. We would. He wouldn't be in this meeting. <laughs> he wouldn't but, be here. But it got it got stranded right away. Yeah, yeah, and that's fine. Yeah, because I, I don't think stranded inventory affects your account health at all, does it? It does not. Well, it affects the fact that you're not sold the book, and it 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 brings your uh, IPI score a little bit lower. But yeah, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't affect it just because you have stranded inventory now. So yeah. anyway, I, I had purchased this book twice, mm. and because of this class, I was taught 
it may be counterfeit. Well, okay. I don't want to sell the darn thing. Well, so I have three of the same book that are all stranded. I just okay. want to get rid of them. Okay. But there's, I mean, those three plus this one we talked about were my only four stranded items. That's really good. There's only yeah. one books. I've got like a hundred stranded books. So that's well, good. You, you can click on removal. Like when you see that stranded inventory, one of the options on the right is remove it so you can remove it or just uh well i think it's disposal and then the other one is but you can, you can like, sell it for a small amount right yeah, liquidation. liquidation yeah thank you thank thanks I mean, yeah. I mean, have you tried steven to put it into uh book finder to see if you can sell to a buyback company no w what you'd have to do then is get the book shipped back to you and then, or to your prep center, and then either you send it off to uh, a sell, uh, sell back your book or a company like that, or um, your prep center will do that for you. But you usually only want to do that if the book say is at least around ten dollars, right? Because it's going to cost you money to uh, send the book mm -hmm. back to you, and then your time and effort to send the book to the to the, uh, a buyback company. Well, I'll just have it shipped back to me. Okay. And one. Okay. I will take it to a thrift store and make sure I don't go back to that <laughs> to that thrift store. <laughs> find it again. <laughs> and well, well, I'll, I'll remember. I'll remember which one it was. But there's so many thrift stores to go to, so I'll, I'll send it to one that I have no good luck with. Now that's someone else get the counterfeit, but market. <laughs> Bob said market. <laughs> Mark said, yeah. So. Renewal or liquidation <laughs> on the right. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where we need to go. That's right. Yep. The removal order. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Thanks so much. Thanks yep. again. Austin. All right. How's everyone doing on their daily book goals, by the way? Is everyone who's, can you guys tell me in the chat, how many books have you bought today? Been you guys on the spot. How many books have you bought? <laughs> oh, Steven's 24, but you have birthday, right? Oh yes. yeah, Run. yeah. That... Got eight. Okay, Scott. Scott got eight. Great. You also got three. All right. Scott's been buying a lot of high school books. I, I talked to him quite often, so I'm happy for him. Forty three on Bookmine in April. Nice. Okay. Okay. Jerry says five. Jerry's yeah. Bill's three. Scott four. Gary's four. Nice. Is that right. a mid point for the day? Because you guys need to get to ten. So hopefully, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we just started uh, sourcing and we'll finish sourcing the rest of the day today. So, but send out Jerry says he may send out two hundred with RA. Okay, well that's that's, that's impressive. Two hundred items with retail arbitrage. That's pretty good. Gary says, how do we handle international um, ISC books? International, um, what does it say for? Oh, international international student edition books. That's right. How yeah. Do you so it's pretty easy. Uh, basically, you are able to sell international student editions yeah. on. International student edition listing, right? So, as long as the as long as the book has an international listing, you're you're good to uh, sell it. Which for the longest time, I just stood away from them altogether because I was like, uh, I don't want I don't want to deal with those books. But it turns out, yeah, as long as it has its own listing, you're fine to sell them. So even even though it says it's not, you're not allowed to sell it in the U.S. As long as that listing is is uh, that for that book, you're fine to sell it. Yep. So you'll see this says international student edition. In the actual image of the book, you'll also see that it says that in the title of the book. So what you would not want to do is sell this international student edition, which is a paperback, on the hardcover U.S. student edition. No, that's what's wrong. wrong. No, no. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you'd want it, you can definitely sell on the international student edition. Let's move. So uh, Dell has a question. Okay. Yeah. I sent a book in to my prep center. Okay. And uh, it said they have a note on it. This teachers look now on, all i use with the ifbn or the asin on it is there something else you have to do to distinguish it as my a teacher's edition so it, if you do it to little l they're, they're trained or most prep centers are trained to like look for teacher's editions because usually a college book that's a teacher's edition is a book that you can sell on the on the actual uh, like the student edition listing but a teacher's edition sold on a teacher's edition listing you can do it so basically, you just go back and say list it. Like, like if, if I don't know if you're using Little Owl, but you can go back and send it back to your inventory, and they'll send it in. Yeah. 
So for example, here's the book yeah. that says United States History Teachers Edition. So once again, just like with the International Student Edition, if it says it in the title, also shows it in the picture, then yeah, you want to sell the Teacher's Edition on, on this listing. But with that said, you don't want to sell this Teacher's Edition listing on the Student Edition, just like you wouldn't want to sell the Student Edition listing of this book on the Teacher's Edition, right? Because you got to right, understand, right? There's two different Which is the... Which is when? Say it again. There are different I. Uh, yeah, there are different ISBN numbers. numbers. Yeah, there are different ISBN numbers. Yep. See, this one says this one on the title says specifically teachers edition. Right. So a good game. What may have happened there was that you bought a student edition book, and the person shipped you that book, but it's a teacher's edition. And so in that case, you want to get a return. I believe it was one I got off. But okay. So what you need to what, what you need to figure out is. The book that you bought, what were you intending that the book readers would work the teacher's edition or not? Because I was intending that it was a teacher's edition. Okay. It, it, a lot of a lot of prep centers are like they teach their employees. If you see teacher's edition, put it to the side. That's a problem book. That more than likely, because like most people are dealing with college books. So they're seeing the college books that they can't sell. So they automatically see teacher's edition and push it to the side. I, I deal with that a lot um, buying high school books. Um, and I have to go back in quite often and tell the uh, little owl that, that this is mine. Send that in. It was supposed to be a teacher's edition. It's on the right ISBN number. Go ahead and send that in. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so Scott has a question. Yeah, so Scott. Yeah, hey, guys. Can you hear me? Yeah, we need Scott. Well, all right. So in, in that same same light, I was going to ask Victor in my one on one later this week, but thought might be might be uh, beneficial for the whole group here. So sure. I've got a, a, a an instructor's edition, and I have that same issue that you talk about, uh, Victor. Um, I'm going to put the is the uh, ASIN in the chat. That would be helpful. Okay, so maybe you guys can take a look at it, but it it has a, a separate uh isbn there's a separate listing for the book it's uh it's it's an annotated instructor's edition um but on the cover there is a sticker that says not for resale and on the back cover imprinted on the cover says not for resale but i have purchased at various times, four of these books, and they all have that same cover language. So curious as to your thoughts, I had Little Owl, uh, one of the books that I had purchased, had said the same thing, Victor, that this is an instructor's edition, you need to send it back. So I thought I would purchase a couple when I saw the price, you know, at a good point and uh, have it sent to me at my house. And they all have the same cover. They all say not for resale, but they all have imprinted an actual, you know, ASIN, uh, ISBN number on the book cover. So yeah. curious to see your thoughts. Is this one okay to sell or is it not okay? For me, it's okay to sell because it has, I mean, not, I mean, I, it, it is okay to sell because it, it's on a listing that has this uh, picture on it. It it yep. it does show that it's an annotated uh, instructor's edition. Uh, it has an ISBN number to it, uh, and and it's been selling since 2019. Uh, yeah, like if it didn't have an ISBN number, or you know, if if this was the book without the annotated uh, instructor's edition, you were trying to sell it on there. I would told I would said no, but the fact that there's already a listing of it, I I, I yeah it. You have no issue selling it. it. What's happening with Little Owl is that he's trained his employees to look for yeah. this little spot like that because a lot of times that means that that book, like they're trying to sell the, the student edition, I mean, they're trying to sell on the student edition a, a teacher's edition that they basically got for free that the, the teacher got for free, and so yeah, those right. books tend to show up every once in a while, and uh, that they're trained to like put those to the side. Very good. I was that was the answer I was hoping for. I like it's yeah. more of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> four of them. Yeah, that was, you bought, you invested a lot. Hopefully, you bought over here in the forties, right? Forty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you know, it has a good text, two good textbook season, so that's good. Yeah. Hey guys, uh, you got to head out um, just because uh, oh, I didn't even see the time. Yeah, but uh, had a great session with you guys, and um, yeah, 
I hope you guys found this useful and yeah, keep buying your books. You guys need to get 10 books. Come on, 10 books on the day. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, all right. I appreciate all right. you guys. All right. Talk to you later. All right. Bye. All right. Bye.